Big update now in that sprawling Georgia election interference case. An appeals court has just rejected a bid from Mark Meadows to move his case out of state court to federal court. Meadows argued his actions to overturn the 2020 election results were part of his official duties as Trump's White House chief of staff and that it should be judged in federal court. But the appeals court disagreed, upholding an earlier ruling. NBC's Blaine Alexander is joining us from Atlanta, also with us former federal prosecutor Temidayo Aganga Williams. So, Blaine, what did this appeals court say? Well, Anna, they rejected it pretty soundly. I mean, I think that it, they almost kind of cited two grounds. One, saying that the statute that Mark Meadows was citing does not apply to a former federal officer, which, of course, is what he is right now. I want to show you a little bit of an excerpt from that, though. They said it doesn't apply to a former federal officer, but even if it did apply to former federal officers, the events giving rise to this criminal action were not related to Meadows' official duties. So essentially saying that his duties as the White House chief of staff are not limitless. You know, one thing that we heard from Mark Meadows on the stand when he testified back in August was that as the White House Chief of Staff, he would do any and ev anything and everything necessary uh, for the President of the United States. And that included setting up phone calls, of course, that now infamous call that he arranged between then President Trump and Secretary of State Brad Raffensperger here in Georgia. So that was kind of his argument. That's what his team has been arguing all along. But what we heard from this uh, panel of judges basically says, no, that's not the case. And it really affirms what we already heard from the district judge, which was that the actions taken, the alleged actions taken by Mark Meadows, had more to do with the Trump campaign than the president of the United States. That's why the judge uh, rejected this argument initially, and that's why these judges appeals judges upheld that rejection. I think one other thing, Anna, that's very interesting in all of this is the quick turnaround in which we got this decision. Remember, these arguments just happened on Friday. We got the decision on Monday. So we're talking about the next business day that we heard the decision from the appeals court. All right. Thank you so much, Blaine. Alexander, Temidayo, how significant is this ruling and how do you see it impacting other cases like Jeffrey Clark's case, a couple of the Georgia fake electors who are trying to move their cases to federal court? So I think it's impactful on several levels. First, with the removal case, I think you can consider those other appeals dead. Uh, Clark, the electors, those are not going to be removed. Mark Meadows had a much stronger case here, and the fact that the 11th Circus rejected his case, I think we can consider those uh, avenues dead for them. I think it's also important because of the reasoning here, and I think it has some relation to the broader presidential immunity argument. If Mark Meadows here is found by this court to have not been conducting any official business, that's going to be persuasive for the D.C. Circuit. So here we're talking about the 11th Circuit that oversees Atlanta. But the judge that wrote that, Judge Pryor, I mean, he is a very conservative judge. This is not someone who, uh, speaking as a lawyer, that's considered the, the center here, right? He's someone whose clerks often go and clerk for Justice Thomas in the Supreme Court. So I think what it tells us here is that the reasoning here that Mark Meadows was not acting with within basically for President Trump and was active for candidate Trump, that's going to be persuasive, especially in conservative circles and potentially for conservative judges going higher up to the Supreme Court. So I think it's incredibly damaging for the Trump side going forward. And as far as a former prosecutor in your shoes, if you are the prosecutor in this case, is this an opportunity now to apply pressure for Mark Meadows to cooperate, potential plea deal? 100 percent. Now, Fannie Willis has said she's going full speed ahead against Mark Meadows and Trump and Giuliani, the really core, most serious offenders in the remaining uh, defendants. But I think any prosecutor is always going to be open to making a deal, especially when you have a bigger fish here and there's no bigger fish than the former president. So I think it opens an opportunity for Mark Meadows to say, you know, you're facing serious time in Georgia and perhaps now he'll be willing to deal. And I think we saw it before the January 6th committee. We've seen him Mark Meadows here, he's always angling. He's always doing as much as he can to avoid culpability, and then he backs up. He goes forward, he backs up. But I think here, now that he's reached a wall, I could see his lawyers perhaps engaging the prosecution again and seeing whether there's a deal to be made here that he avoids prison. So Trump's lawyers have also filed a new motion to try to dismiss this case from Georgia uh, on First Amendment grounds, arguing, quote, every charge and overt act alleged against President Trump rests on core acts of political speech and advocacy that lie at the heart of the First Amendment. Do you agree? 
I don't. I, I think this is another example of the Trump team throwing sp kind of spaghetti at the wall. I mean, that's what they've been doing. They are going, and I would expect them to, go with every possible iteration of every argument they could have. This is a weak argument, I believe, uh, because one, the charges are not purely prosecuting the former president because of what he said. They're looking at what he did as well, right? A conspiracy is not merely a thought crime, which is what he's suggesting. It's not merely that you said something, it's that you entered into a corrupt agreement. That's actually doing something. That's you and another person had a meeting of the minds in order to pu push forward an unlawful end goal. So I think this uh, argument is, is, I would expect any zealous advocate to push forward any argument you can put down that's colorable, but I think it's going to fail.